All right. Peace of the family. Let me move this mic. It's messing up my, my screen in the back. Early show today. Let me make sure my audio. Okay. All right. Peace of the family. What's good for everybody who is um who's in the chat on an early early bird tip. You know, brother Rich don't usually do shows this early, but um just want to leave a little message for the God known as Brother Panic, the Titan, the Dark Lord, <laughs> you know, yeah. No tep, Negroes, no tep. What do you used to say, no tep? Oh, man, he had a good time with life, Brother Panic. And uh, we gonna just want to give my farewell to the brother on my channel, my platform. <clears throat> Send him some love and energy where he's at. You know. Shout out to everybody in the chat. Um yeah, there's a um the first thing I want to say, I guess. So yeah, yeah, I know, yeah. I mean, I, I will say this. Out of everybody we know that ever passed away in the history of this country and in our time, I don't think there's nobody that prepared as well for this transition like Brother Panic in terms of his research and in terms of um, what he spoke on. The beautiful thing about Brother Panic is his perception of death was different from the rest of the world's perception of death. And I think for us to get where we need to get, one thing I tell y'all, I have a plethora of personalities on my website. And they may all contradict each other. I think the goal of the viewer is not to look at the lecturer as being above you, but look at the lecturer as being a piece of this puzzle that you need to solve to get up out of here. So Brother Panic would read so many books and he would give us all these, 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 these this, this long list of books that he got information from because he, he, he studied a lot of different people. And I think that, you know, we got to take what each individual has to offer and apply it to our overall mission and our overall destiny. Uh, Brother Panic, the piece that he supplied, the piece that, you know, was important, important aspect to my puzzle in understanding life, what Brother Panic provided was understanding death a lot more, not being fearful of death, and actually embracing death and understand life as not the end all be all. This is a, such a small percentage of who we are. I mean, it's a small, and, and I'm not saying that in any way to hate, for, you know, giving y'all permission to hate life or, you know, to be miserable. But the truth of the matter is that what we call life down here on this planet is a very small part of the overall picture. And the reason why we do the things we do, the reason why we, we rob each other, steal from each other, we do all the evil acts to one another, is because we can't see beyond this life. If we was able to see 2,000 years from now and the consequences of our actions 2,000 years from now, maybe we wouldn't do what we do. But all we could think about is right now and uh, how can I survive in this moment in time? I want to thank Brother Panic for teaching us about life after death. You know, Biggie named his song Life After Death. He named his album Life After Death. And I think uh, um, Blue Pill called, he just put up an IG post and called Panic a... Uh, um, a name he gave to what he did was a um, a death doula. And it's ironic. The show I'm having tonight is about life. It's called Black Births. It's very ironic. No coincidence, but 
synchronicity. The show tonight is about black births. And um, it depends on your perception of black birth. Because one can ever, one can even view what Brother Panic went through as a black birth into the, you know, another realm. But we're going to get into it. Uh, I'm going to talk for a little while. We're going to get into a couple of things. This is my, this is Brother Rich, a little tribute to the Brother Panic. I have a personal experience with the, everybody has a personal experience with everybody. I have a unique experience with the Brother Panic. When it comes to this community, when it comes to the work, and um, when it comes to my personal journey and things me and him have discussed along my personal journey and along his journey, um, you know, we, we've, we've, we've been there for each other. We've been there for each other on numerous occasions. There was time, I, I, I'll never forget there was a time when I first started doing interviews and I was on blog talk and something that happened with somebody who either they stood me up or would for an interview or there was technical difficulties and panic happened to be listening. Panic was like, yo, Rich, I'm here. I got you. And I'll never forget that. I didn't even know he was listening at the time. And I was like, oh shit. Okay. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I'm, I'm stuck. I'm like, what I'm gonna do? What I'm gonna do? You know, I'm, I'm young in the interviews. I'm like, I'm in my early 20s and shit. And, uh, you know, we've known each other for a while. But listen, um, I'm going to talk about the brother for a little while. Yeah, the blog talk episodes are gold. Yes, they are. They definitely are. I want to start out, um, before I say a few words about the brother Panic, and shout out, huge shout out. To his wife Khadija. <clears throat> and I'm gonna start out talking about how much of an important role she played. And I feel like I'm getting a message from the brother to start out like that and to stress that point. And it was a, a vibe. I'm very intuitive. I'm an empath. I pick up on energy. I'm very spiritual. And if there's the strongest message I got from Panic, and I'm gonna talk about that. And it deals with Khadijah. And um, shout out to that queen right there. Um, We're going to get into I'm I'm going to talk about the brother for a brief, uh, you know, for a little while. This is my, like I said, this is my tribute to the brother. I have a personal experience with the brother. Got a lot of love for the brother. Like I said, we've been there for each other. With a lot of things that favors. I asked the brother, could you do this? Could you do that? Um, You know, things, you know. And just being able to talk to one another. So, um, yeah. And even, you know, yeah, talk that sass. What panic you say? Talk that sass. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but I want to start out the show before I even talk for a little while. I got a show tonight, actually, um, at nine. Like I said, on Black Burst, if you're just tuning in. But I want to start out. I want to dedicate. If there's anything, Brother Panic. Everybody knows Brother Panic as being a student of Bobby Hammond. He carried the torch of Bobby Hammond. When Bobby Hammond left, Panic carried the torch, and he carried it well. He carried it well. Bobby Hammond is one of the greatest teachers when it comes to the occult realm, when it comes to metaphysics realm of our era, of our time. So to fill Bobby's shoes, those are some big shoes to fill. And nobody could ultimately fill anybody's shoes. Because you all, each one of us has our own shoe size. And when I say our own shoe size, I mean our own fingerprint. Our fingerprint is our shoe size. No two shoe sizes, i.e. fingerprints, are the same. So Panic ultimately had his own destiny, but he was a student of Bobby, and he continued to work for Brother Bobby. And he did a great job at teaching the melanated community, a community who is just completely lost when it comes to the occult realm, the metaphysical realm, uh, you know, all of these teachings, he did a one magnificent job of continuing the research, the studies of Bobby Hemet. So, uh, I want to start out, I want to give the brother a trip. My song, uh, reminds me of the brother, him and Bobby Hemet. It's called I Could Do Magic, and I was gonna wait for 
I was gonna wait for the video. The video is gonna premiere in a couple of weeks. Uh, the album is gonna drop in September, Holy Ghost Three. And um, I was gonna wait for the um, video to play the whole track. But as a tribute to Brother Panic, the name of the song is "I Could Do Magic," you know, Abracadabra. And um, one thing Brother Panic taught us was magic. One thing Bobby Hammond taught us was magic. So as we start the show, and before I start speaking, no temp, niggas. I could do magic. The song, I'm dedicating this song right now to Brother Panic. I'm going to let the whole song run through. I never did that before on YouTube. I was going to wait for the video, but shout to shout out to my Brother Panic and his spirit. Strong spirit. I seen... I, we'll talk about it. I'll be back in one second. But this this song, I could do magic right now. I want to uh, play this play this one time before I speak. I want to play this one time for the brother Panic and what he represented magic all day every day. <laughs> First time I ever dropped that, yeah. First time I ever dropped the whole song for y'all. 
like I said, I was going for the video, but uh, the brother Panic did a magnificent job of teaching us magic, teaching us that we are magicians, teaching us we can manipulate what we call reality, teaching us this realm is holographic, teaching us this world, this realm is an illusion, teaching us about what we call death can be called life to those who are in a higher state of knowledge and being. So had to play that for my brother Panic. Um, like I seen somebody to comment, um, you know, I'm not going to elaborate on all types of things with the brother, his family, his wife will elaborate on that, but the brother, uh, made a peaceful transition it was no foul play it was no, no Illuminati. And if you watched the video I uploaded earlier, uh, Khadijah talks about that. The brother made a peaceful transition. So it's all love. And the brother made his way up out of here. He talked about the cusp. He talked about a lot of different things dealing with death and he made videos on how to die since 2020. I had a long talk on the phone with him. I remember when he first got the book by um, Judy King. What, what was the name of the book that he was reading out of the last couple of years from Judy King? What was the um, what was the name of the book from Judy King? I think that's the name. What was the name of it? I know y'all know. I got the smartest chat on YouTube. What was the name of the book by Judy King? He was so excited when he got that book. So excited. So excited. I mean, he talked to me for hours about that book. It wasn't Balls of Fire. That's one book, but it was a, it was another book. I think that's one book. Isis Thesis, yeah. Isis Thesis. All right, let me... Uh... Yeah, the Isis Thesis. Hold up, y'all. Let me do something real quick. Right. Yeah, the Isis Thesis. Yo, when he got that book, oh, man, that brother was excited. He Because he was like, you know... Conscious is becoming a little boring. And then when he got that book, he was like, yo, I made crazy break breakthroughs. Like he was mad excited when he got the ISIS thesis. And it's not just when you get a book, but the way he was able to interpret it was unlike anybody else we heard interpret it. And um, the brother did his thing. And uh, yeah, so um, yeah, how to die and never come back. Yeah, the brother made it clear he did not want to come back here. Um, he talked about, you know, sometimes, you know, we come back here for certain reasons. We may not want to come back here. We may come back here because a great loved one of ours is here. And, um, you know, we just never know what the case may be of why we came back. Everybody says we came back to learn a lesson or we didn't learn something. We may come back sometimes just to be with a loved one one more time because we love that person so much. We want to experience physical senses with that person one time, or we may want to help that person. So there's a lot of reasons we may come down here. Ultimately, regardless of how many books we read, y'all, we don't know all there is to know about this realm, this life, or the afterlife. You know, we're, we're, we're figuring out and, and as we go along. And I guarantee when we finally leave this front, we'd be like, God damn, I ain't know that. I know that. There's a lot of things panic ain't know that. I'm sure he's like, wow. I know it was like that. So, um, yeah, I mean, like, then this is why there's no sense in arguing with people. Like, there's, there's no sense in even arguing with anybody. You know, we do the best we could do to figure out and understand life the best of our ability and death to the best of our ability. But once we leave, you know, shit, it's, you know, that's when we figure it out. But, um... Panic, I mean, he, he was great, great asset to our community. Um, he was totally against arguing. He talked about the debate and arguing a lot. Talked about that a lot. Um, I got this sound bowl. It's making a sound. I was going to leave it here because I wanted to, uh, like, ring it. You see the sound bowl, y'all? You see the sound bowl? I was I had I got I got the whole um scale, you know, do re mi fa so la ti do, but something told me to get the emerald, the the, the green and the yellow, the, this one right here. So um let me ring it real quick because I'm I'm gonna move it because it's making sound. So let me ring it. Ring this bell one time. This uh bell one time for my brother panic as we start the show. Um I don't know what note this is. I could put it on my phone and find out the tuner. Yeah, I got the tuner on. Let's ring one time for the brother panic. All right, 
Christmas. That was uh that was the note E. So we was in a note E. That was E4. E4, but let me move this because this is making too much sound. I just wanna I don't wanna be too long. And that's like it's like reverber reverberating if that's the right word. <clears throat> um yeah, 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 yeah. Panic was panic. He was a unique individual. You gotta love everybody for being a unique individual. You gotta love everybody for doing what they do. Um a couple of things I want to talk about before uh I get out of here. As you'll see, I got the sun behind me. You know, I feel as though our soul, if you look at Kemet, we're burning sun, we're all burning suns at our root, at our core, we're all burning suns. And that's that Christ energy, the sun, the son of God, the son of God. We are all the son of God. That's the Christ, the Christos. That's the Christos energy, you know? Um, One of the most important things I learned from the brother Panic, and then one of the things he stressed, I think in his last 10 years, I feel as though, especially uh, when he got with Khadijah, and he's been, he was with that sister, I believe, for about 15 years, was the love frequency. And if anybody knows Brother Panic, you know, he's a, you know, he's a New Yorker. You know, he's a hardcore Negro, you know, New Yorker. You know how New Yorkers get. Y'all see New Yorkers all the time. And I feel like Khadijah bought a certain side of him that he didn't know existed. I remember the brother Bobby. You can't talk about Brother Panic without talking about the brother Bobby. Bobby Hemming made a video called The Mysteries of Love. And uh, when Bobby got with Linda, Bobby started talking about love a lot more. Bobby's life changed when Bobby got with Linda. And he started talking. If This is like for people in the old school. Like you got to be like, I've been around this thing for a while. You know, I've been around this thing since my, you know, uh, since I'm a teen, you know, I've been, I've been, I've been around this information since I was a teenager. Not many people could say they've been around this, maybe the new school people, because the information is everywhere, but to be around as long as I've been around and to say, I've been around, I've been around this since I was a teenager. That is, uh, that's amazing. That's my, that's how, that's how I know this is my destiny. That's how I know this is my destiny and I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. But Bobby used to talk about love a lot, a lot once he got with his, his queen, Linda. And uh, one thing Panic used to stress to me and tell me was that Bobby used to always talk to him about love. And, yo, that's the ultimate. Love, 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 love. And before Panic got with Khadisha, pa Panic was like, yo, this nigga soft. He getting soft on us, man. He keep talking about love. And Panic would tell me when he got with Khadija, he figured out what Bobby was talking about and how right and exact he was. And um, love is something that a lot of us don't get to experience. It doesn't have to last forever if you do find somebody to fall in love with. But the mere fact, there's a, there's a saying, there's a quote, there's an old quote that says, it is better to have loved and lost than to never have loved at all. I don't know exactly who said that quote, but if you ever been in love, you know exactly what that quote means. And a lot of people get triggered when the conversation of love comes up because they never experienced it. So they feel left out and it's okay. But I just feel as though you don't have to bash the concept of love or being in love or having a significant other to love. And, um, I think that panic when he when he, when when he finally experienced that in this realm through Khadijah, it changed everything about him, everything about the brother, and um, I'm glad that the brother got to experience that, and I feel as though regardless if we experience that with a mate, uh, we could experience through our children. That's a different type of love, but just the concept of love is something that panic stressed and i don't know if a lot of y'all picked up on that or not but that's what i got a lot from the brother was his concept of you know love in this realm experiencing love in this realm and how powerful it is and i think that you know 
him and his sister Khadijah's, their relationship expands beyond this realm. And that's deep because some a lot of people can't find somebody to love them for two years. And to find somebody, and I'm not saying that to in a negative way to people, but what I'm saying is what the brother experienced was something out of this world. And um, I'm glad that he got to experience that. Very glad for the brother. He deserved it. The brother deserved it. Everything he's been through, um, everything he's taught us, he deserved that such a unique thing to experience, to experience love that goes beyond this realm. To have somebody that loves you when both of y'all leave this realm and they and y'all looking for each other. And y'all looking for each other. It's rare. It's special. That's unique. It's one of the greatest things in the world. Imagine leaving this realm looking for your loved one. A lot of us, we leave this room, we like, man, get the fuck away from this motherfucking bitch, man. I got to get you. This one, you know, they're they, they going to be looking for each other after this round. And that's something that can't be taught in books. That's something that can only be observed and experienced. And just observing them with one another. And experience my own experience of love. I know how unique and special each love experience is. And... uh that is the ultimate wealth in this realm, I think. And if there's anything you should strive after, it's to achieve that love frequency. And like I said, it, it comes in many forms. It could be love for self. It starts out with love for self, actually. So if you don't have anybody, don't worry about it. You have yourself and we are a na we are an organization. We have organs and we are a nation. Have love for yourself, family. If you have love for yourself, if we had love for ourselves, we couldn't possibly do the things we do. If you have love for yourself and you understand the teachings of Brother Panic and you understand there's no such thing as space and time, we possibly couldn't possibly do the things that we do to one another. We are all, we have over 75 trillion cells in us. Each one of them cells is sentient beings. Each one of them cells care for us and loves us. Just like we're in a universe looking like, oh, shit, is it going to rain today? Is it going to thunder? We got cells in our, in our body. We got sentient beings in our body like, is it going to rain? Is it going to thunder? Is it going to be a rainstorm? And depending on our emotions, they may get sun. If we're happy, check this out. If we're happy, our cells, our universe, our sentient beings 75 trillion sentient beings may get sunshine. If we exhibit joy, happiness, love. If we're sad, they may experience a drought. They may experience a rainstorm that destroys all the crops. The same emotions we get with the weather, they get with weather, with our emotions. Our emotions, they say our emotions control the weather in the external realm. So you know what? As above, so below. If our emotions control the weather in the external realm and the Indians used to dance to make it rain, what do you think when we dance? What do you think it makes it does inside of us? What do you think the temperature does inside of us? What they say when black people get happy, when summertime come around, it's hot. When niggas is in the car, it's hot. We got that heat. We don't need heat. We got heat already. We don't need heat. We got heat. We pack more heat than the sun. Facts. We are the sun. Everything is a projection of our of our vision, of our eyes that we see with our brain. It's all coming from inside. And um, love is more. I think um, yeah. The last interview I did with Yaki. Love is the best nutrient on the planet. For all the health people out there <laughs> for all the health people out there love is the best nutrient on the planet think of any nutrient think of any food think of sea moss and and bananas and apples and and, and cranberries and you know all the fruits and vegetables you could think of the best nutrient you could get is that of is love if you could fill your body with love it's better than any anything you could you can ever eat. Anything you could ever eat if you if you feel with love. One of the 
closest things to love is gratitude because you're so appreciative. You're so, you're so, in, you know, so that's why they say gratitude is important. But yeah, man, Panic taught us, and it, as hard as he was, if you got to know him, you, you knew he had a, a, you know, a love inside to him. As, as much of a New Yorker as he was, a Queens New Yorker, as much of a Queens New Yorker as Panic was, if you ever knew the brother, you knew the brother had definitely had a loving, a loving side to him. And I want to personally thank that brother to end this segment. <clears throat> I want to personally thank that brother for um, talking to us about the power of love and displaying people flaws. I say I said this before. We're in the internet era, right? We're in the internet era. The internet era is people full of people showing off. People showing off their jewelry, their cars, they're showing off their trips, where they went, their vacations, their business success, all types of stuff. Not many people show off their love. So one of the things that, like I said, I find good things in everybody. So one of the things I love about DJ Khaled and in the black community, we're taught to He's not black. He's a, you know, I love the aspect that Khaled shows that he loves his woman, that he loves his children. I can resonate with that. And uh, Brother Panic showed that. And I thank Brother Panic for showing black men all over the world that it's okay to love your woman openly. Bob, Bobby Hammett showed that. So I'm going to continue to close out this segment. These brothers showed. While everybody's flossing everything else, I did this, I did that, I did this, I did that, I did this. These brothers flossed. These brothers, let me say this again, these brothers flossed. What they, what's the new word? They flex. They flex was that they loved a woman. That was they flex. Panic's flex was that he loved Khadijah. He let you know that again and again and again and again and again and again and again. So shout out to Panic with his flex, his spiritual flex, which is the real wealth. Shout out to Brother Panic. Okay. What's up with y'all in the chat? Why admire celebrities, oh dear? I'm giving an example of, of loving your mate and I'm using a celebrity as an example. What's wrong with admiring celebrities are people just like us. I could have used B.O.B. Panic was friends with a celebrity. Like, what the hell are you talking about? What the hell are you talking about? Don't go there. I'm What I'm admiring is the frequency, no matter who it comes from. It could be a white person, a black person, a celebrity, a regular person, a doctor, a lawyer, a dentist. What I'm admiring, what we have to start seeing in people is the frequencies. I bloom and rose. I'm admiring the frequency that Khalid is displaying. I'm admiring the frequency that Bobby Hammond is displaying. I'm admiring the frequency that, that Brother Panic is displaying. It's a frequency. Don't get caught up in the word celebrity. I'm admiring the frequency. And I'm using him as an example because everybody sees him constantly on the television or on the internet. It's a frequency. I'm admiring that. I admire the frequency of love. I'm not going to let nobody make me feel bad about admiring that frequency of love, especially when it comes to your woman or your children. You'll see how I am, how I've dis displayed certain feelings as a family man. I don't hide my happiness. I don't hide my happiness with being a family man. Just like Panic didn't hide his happiness with his love for Khadijah or what he was doing with his family. So there's no need to hide that. Don't get caught up in words. Don't get don't put yourself in a box. We all out here, um, we out here tapping in the frequencies. We out here tapping in the frequencies. Shout out, by the way, shout out to the celebrity. Shout out to the celebrity B.O.B. One of Panic's closest friends. Um, 
he did a wonderful job with Khadija in the video. He did a wonderful job with Khadija in the video, sending a farewell message to the brother Panic. And I appreciate uh, the brother for what he's contributed to the brother Panic. But um, I like brother Panic. One of the things that was special about the brother was he was unapologetically himself. And in a world that we are we are taught to follow people, even if we're in the conscious community or whatever community in, we are taught to be followers. And he was truly a leader. He moved at his own pace. Um, he, uh, you know, he danced to his own tune. I think that's the phrase that they use. He danced to his own tune. I remember the last video I seen a panic, you know, the dude was eating a pizza and I think he was drinking a Pepsi. Now, you know, 70% of you niggas would die if y'all seen a conscious person eating a pizza and drinking a Pepsi on camera. Y'all be like, oh my God, the community has failed us. So what am I going to do? And that's, y'all don't get it. This is who this brother was. This is who this brother was. This he wasn't shy about who what he represented. He was an occultist. He wasn't Dr. Sabi. He was an occultist. He wasn't trying to live to be 200 years old. He came down here to fulfill a mission. Everybody's not down here to be 200 years old and be miserable just to say I live to be 200. Everybody's not down here for that. Some people are down here to fulfill a job and get the F up out of here. And this is why they may have a serious demeanor while they're down here, because on a subconscious level, they know they don't have as much time, that much time to BS. So they do, they're getting busy and doing what they got to do. Look at Kobe Bryant. I mean, Kobe Bryant is one of the most stoic, serious dudes you will ever encounter. After he, he got his basketball career retired. Then the brother won an Emmy. Then the brother made a transition. He fulfilled his mission. Shout out to Kobe Bryant, another celebrity who taught me about work ethic. Great example of work ethic and mama mentality. I said, don't get caught up in all of this. Brother Panic's one of his closest friends was a celebrity, B.O.B. Great brother. Talked to the brother a few times. Then talked to the brother a lot. Talked to the brother a few times. Good down-to-earth brother. Met him at Brother Panic House. I even did an interview with Brother Panic and B.O.B. that I never released. I was working on this documentary called um, The God Frequency. I never released it yet. I don't know what I'm going to do with the footage. If I'm going to finish it or what. But I have footage with B.O.B. and Panic at Panic House. Great, amazing footage, amazing documentary, amazing documentary footage. Shout out to that brother and what he has done and what he represent and, and the role he's played. You know, but the brother Panic, man, unapologetically himself, eating a pizza, drinking Pepsi. Oh, these niggas would these niggas would be so scared. Oh, y'all would some of y'all would die before y'all eat a pizza and drink Pepsi on camera and call yourself con. Consciousness is not a box. It's not a little box that we exist in and we lived in and we have to follow a set of rules. Consciousness is about knowing thyself, who you are. It's about knowing thyself. Who are you on a deeper level, on a multidimensional level? What is important to you? Is living to be 100, is eating well, is having a mate. We all have, see, we're all not honest with ourselves. So we don't know what's important to ourselves because we've never been honest with ourselves. We've always followed what people have told us to be or what to do. Yeah, Panic had a slice. That was that New York City pizza. Panic had a slice of that New York City pizza. Yeah, Panic said, F your ego. Yeah. Yeah, Panic was, um, he did talk about a lot about the ego. He talked about a lot about love, the subconscious mind. Like I said, him and Bobby, they were our uh, occult master teachers. 
especially in the melanated community. And a lot of people in other communities listening to Brother Panic and Brother Bobby Hemming as well. Shout out to every community that listens to these brothers. But what makes it special with the black community is that we're so brainwashed by the church. And the church is, has done its, a great job. They've done a certain great job, but we had the we we had we had to as a people evolve past that, especially with them limiting and stunning our growth. We're asking questions they don't want to answer. We had to evolve past that. I'm not trying to come at the grandmas out there, but we had to evolve past that. We had to understand on the deeper level who we were, and thank God we had people like Brother Panic and Brother Bobby to teach us those lessons, who we were on a deeper, like I said, multi-dimensional level, like I said, on a deaf level. If we understood what Brother Panic did, understood, if we understood what Bobby Hammond understood about death, we would live a whole different life. We live, uh, most of our people live like they're dead already because they're so scared of dying, they live like they're dead already. Let me say that again. Most of our people are so scared of dying, we live like we're dead already. What's the use of living to be a hundred if you live in, if you living like a dead man? If you a dead man walking, don't be a dead man walking. Be a young man living. Live like you young. Do shit that when they that they tell you you too, you too you too old to do that. No, I'm not, nigga. I'm I'm being free. I'm doing what I want to do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Learn all the rules in this dimension and then break them. Hey, let me say this again. Learn the rules of this dimension. And then break them according to your own, you know, I'm not saying break them and then your ass get caught in purgatory or something like that. You know what I'm saying? In limbo, what I'm saying is learn the rules to find out that there are no rules. Learn all the, and that's what the school, the Egyptian mystery school was about. Learn all the rules to find out that there are no rules. But if you find out that there are no rules before you learn the rules, you got it wrong. You have to learn the rules to find out that there are no rules. Let me say that. Because if you find out that there are no rules before you learn the rules, then you may not understand the rules. That shit makes no sense on a physical level, but it makes all the sense in the world on a spiritual level. Learn the rules to understand that there are no rules. But if you learn that there are no rules before you learn the rules... You're going to be messed up. You're going to be messed up by the rules. <laughs> You're going to be messed up by the illusionary rules. Uh, it, it gets deep in this round. The contradiction, the paradoxes. The paradoxes get real deep in this round. Real deep in this round. Somebody say, there is no spoon. <laughs> there is no spoon, Negroes. There is no spoon. You know what I'm saying? Is no spoon. Quite the conundrum. Somebody said, quite the conundrum, God. Yeah, quite the... Let me put that out there. Yeah, that's funny. Quite the conundrum. The divine paradox. Yes, the divine paradox. Shout to Panic for eating that slice of pizza on camera. Not because I wanted the brother to eat the pizza for egotistical purposes, but because the brother was a reminder to me that eating an alkaline diet isn't the end all and be all of life. It's great. I eat alkaline the majority of the time. What I had, I, the last meat I had, what I had, pause, last meat I had, pause. Um, I think I had a chicken nugget or something like that. Who is this at my door? All of y'all. Who is this? Oh, shit. I got to answer this. This is some Negro shit. Give me a second, y'all. I'll be right back. Give me a second. Let me... um. For those of y'all who came in late, I'm going to play this one more time. This song is dedicated to Brother Panic. I could do magic. I'm going to come back, and I'm going to wrap it up soon. But this song is dedicated to the Brother Panic, Brother Bobby, who taught us the magic in our community and the importance of being magicians. All right? Be right back. Oh, 
All of a sudden money started coming Then I cut the Holy Ghost I still be rhyming even when I'm mumbling oh, You repeat my name three times Why you staring in the mirror? Bottle will appear like who? I came from out of thin air To me the gun is like a magic wand I'll make a parlor disappear I will knock nigga teeth out his mouth Just to turn up to veneer I can do magic, I can do magic 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 When I open up my mouth, I can move masses Black magic on the beat, turn it to a classic I'ma take the money out the bank, then I'ma put it in a mattress Tell me the niggas gotta pick the cow, so I turn it to my own fashion I'm the original AI, I don't gotta go to practice I got the answer for all the questions, you don't even gotta ask it Heard another rapper got blasted Damn T, Molly, X I'ma mix the dollar with the acid I can do magic, I can do magic 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 Call me Houdini, the way I remove chains I make it look so easy, when the camp low Make the money fall from the sky Like it's Houdini, too creepy I'm a wizard, I use Ouija, Mario Side partner, take the pipe down Call a Louise, I'm the blue genie When I do a magic spell I say hocus pocus, get the cold and smoke Dip in the dope and post I know who the holy ghost, Alec Sam. I do magic like Shaq and Sam. On the magic like Shaq and Orlando I come from a magical land Feel like Urban Johnson on the lake of the chair That's a talented magical hand If you pass it to me in a basket, I'll do it in a macula sand Abracadabra, turn imagination into matter I'll be turning eyes into cadavers I'm the alpha and in your mega I'm the before and after I'm a tish. I'm the alchemist when in the kitchen Got a secret recipe I'm mixing If you witness Jehovah you stitching Are you Christian? No I'm different I created a whole new religion I be making accurate predictions Life is like an episode of Simpsons I can do magic I can do magic I can do magic I can do magic I can do magic, 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 I can do magic Yeah, I could do magic. Shout out to the brother Panic for being one of the master teachers in our community when it comes to teaching us how to do magic and that we are magicians, man. Him and the brother Bobby Hammett held it down. Who is the artist? That's Cambada. Where you been at, y'all? Lotus, that's Cambada. I did the beat. I did the beat. Uh, that's Cambada. The album is coming out in December. I'm thinking, don't quote me on this, y'all. I'm thinking Christmas. I'm thinking Christmas is the whole album, Holy Ghost 3, will be released. But anyway, we'll talk about that another time. So um, just to wind down, um, if y'all noticed Panic in his last video, make sure y'all go to occultlectures.com. Make sure y'all go there. Um, watch the video I posted today with, with his queen, Khadijah. She's talking about they're, they're having an event, November 25th, a celebration. Brother Panic in Atlanta. For more information, you could go to occultlectures.com. Everybody, make sure y'all get the panic pack. Just go to occultlectures.com and show support. Um, show support to the brother panic and to his family. Go to occult lectures and support how you can go to occultlectures.com and show support. Support goes way deeper than just words, words is great. But let's do something to support the brother. And uh, by going to his website, coming to this event, that, that's huge support. If y'all can make this event November 25th, that would be great. I will definitely be in attendance. 
Um, if y'all can make this event, that would be great. It's in Atlanta. Information is at occultlectures.com. All right. Buy his books. Yeah. Buy his books. Panic Pack. Get the Panic Pack. Panic Pack talk about how his the panic panic used to talk about how the panic pack was inspired by his friend in another realm. And uh the same way his friend is another realm. See, the people, our ancestors, our friends, our family who leave this realm, they got the bird's eye view of this realm. We have we got this zoom. You know how you got a camera and you zoom in? And when you zoom in in the camera, say you got a camera. Let me get rid of this. You got your panic pack. Good. Good, Tyra. When you got a camera and you zoom in, you can only see up close. So there's a whole picture. But we're zoomed in so much. Reality is a zoomed in image of uh, our reality is a zoomed in image of what reality really is. So reality is infinite potential. But if we seen that, that shit will look, it would drive us crazy. If we seen reality for what it was, it would drive us crazy. So we have to zoom in our lens, our aperture, or all those technical camera terms. What is it? I think it's the aperture and the um the iris. What is it? iris? It's different terms for that, for that, for that, for the focal lens. You know what I'm saying? They they, they zoom it in and they twist it and turn. Um, and then you're able to see up close. But if we was to see reality for what it was, it would drive us nuts. But in another realm, you got a bird's eye view in it, and it doesn't drive you nuts. So this is why we ask. They talk. Panic talked about this. Many many people talked about this. Um, you ask your ancestors for help, is because they could see the realm from a different a bird's eye view. That's why they're able to give you help that you could never imagine, and they could tell you things that will succeed that you could never imagine because they're seeing it from a bird eye's lens. They seen it. They see the whole picture playing out. Past, present, and future. And they're like, oh, nigga, you got to do that. And you're like, why would I do that? I don't want to do that. I'm scared. They're like, no, nigga, if you want to succeed, do that. If you, you know, do this. If you want love, you know, they're telling us. So Panic sharing that personal experience with us and how successful this Panic Pack was shows us the power of getting help from our loved ones from another realm. So shout out to Brother Panic being in another realm. May you provide your Queen Khadija with the ultimate help. I would love for us to support Khadija, each one of us, everybody that's in this chat right now, by going to occult lectures, by coming to the event, buying a book, buying a panic pack, something. You know? Um, besides that, with the Brother Panic, the last time I talked to the brother Panic, Panic was worried. Panic was always worried about the direction of the of the quote unquote conscious community. And he talked about it all the time. He talked about the debates and arguing and stuff like that. Um, in the beginning of 2022, I talked to Panic. <clears throat> and he seen what I was doing. Now, uh, my channel for years, I've, you know. I've only had a select few amount of people on my channel. If y'all notice, prior to 2020, my channel was like exclusively Red Pill, Blue Pill, and a few other people. Professor Griff, Red Pill, Blue Pill, Professor Griff, Brother Panic. It's probably like five, six people. You can count on your hand. You know, five, six, seven, eight people. That was from the golden era of Khan. Phil Valentine. Uh, I say the Duke of Tears. In 2022, I made the conscious decision to take my channel in a different direction. And um, I got the call for my personal spirit, knowing myself that in order for me to go where I got to go and take the community where it has to go and do what I got to do, I had to reach out to other YouTube creators in the YouTube arena and just people in the um, internet to get on my channel. And Panic is from the golden era. So he was a little worried about my approach because he wanted to make sure that everybody had the same values, even if they talked about something different, that he or Phil Valentine or Asir 
he was big on Asir, Phil Valentine, the brother, you know, the old school brothers, even if they talked about Aleem Bay, uh, even if they talked about different things, they stood on something. And he wasn't a big fan of the, the whole YouTube generation and the buffoonery that it represented. And the fact that every a lot of people got turned out from YouTube videos being monetized. People did whatever they had to do. They argued, they fight, they uh, they lied, whatever it take. They clout chased, whatever it took to get a view. If I got to use your name to get a view, I'm going to use your name to get a view. I'm going to use your name in 10 videos to get a view. I'm going to just keep using your name to get a view. And, um, you know, and I, and I told the brother Panic, I said, Panic, I, I got this. Don't worry about it. I got it. Don't worry about it. I got it. I know what I'm doing. And the reason why I told him that is because it wasn't coming from my ego. It was a direct message from my spirit about how I'm supposed to move. And I was confident in how I was supposed to move. And 2022 was the biggest year of my life. It turned out, and I had this conversation with him in January. And by the end of 2022, y'all, I, I posted the YouTube stats and just that my impact. It doesn't even have to do nothing with YouTube stats. Just my impact on the community and what I did. 2022 was, uh, I emphasized the metaphysical community on top of that. While everybody was going left, I went right. Everybody was going with pop culture because I did pop culture with Griff and Zaza Ali in, my, in 2015 and 16 and 14. I did pop culture and I went in that direction with Griff and Zaza Ali and we tackled a lot of pop culture topics. In 2022, I decided to tackle metaphysical topics. I, my spirit told me that's the direction I was supposed to go. And panic, we had a talk in 20, like I said, in January. And he was like, yo, you know, make sure these, you know, these Negro, I'm like, yo, panic, yo, don't worry about it. And um, I took a break from putting panic on. I, I just want to, and just from a lot of the, I just wanted to focus on some of the, the newer speakers. And I wish I would have had the brother on again before the brother made the transition. And, um, yeah, but the brother knew he seen what I, he was like, you know, okay. All right, Britt, you got it. And, um, I just told the brother, like, you know, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going in this direction. I want to get these people on here. I want to get these people on here. Shout out to everybody who I've introduced. Uh, Rod Hayes, brother Yosef, so many people, al uh, Billy Carson, um, so many people I've introduced to the community since 2020. You know, a lot of a lot of people that uh, ISIS wisdom. Um, I mean, the list goes on and on. So a lot, a lot of people, you know, just wanted to collaborate with some of the YouTubers out there and and really connect. If y'all notice, I'm big on collaboration, and I always get, if y'all notice, I always get the people, to, the, the speakers to collaborate with each other. Y'all never see the speakers collaborate. I got Panic and Bobby Hammett to do a lecture together. Nobody never seen Brother Panic and Bobby do a lecture. I got them to do it on Blog Talk Radio about Michael Jackson. When the death of Michael Jackson happened, probably the most influential entity that we ever seen in this realm in our time, in the last 100, 200 years, 300 years, Michael Jackson. Bobby Hammond and Brother Panic did a lecture on Michael Jackson on my blog talk show. I don't know if they ever did a lecture together after that or before that. I don't think before that, definitely. I don't know if they did one together after that, but they did a lecture on my blog talk show together. I set that up. I always set up events for the speakers to collaborate. I see who's a good fit, and I put them together because I feel as though there's strength in numbers and there's strength in unity. And um, I would get, I would ask Panic to collaborate a lot, but he never turned me, never turned me down. Not once. The biggest event I ever had in my life was the gathering of the masters in New York with Phil Valentine, I see the Duke of Tears, and Brother Panic. Oh, it, it was packed, yo! I wish y'all could have been there, yo. Phil Valentine, I see the Duke of Tears, and Brother Panic. It was packed. All of us was like sardines. We had, if you was inside, you was like this. It was so hot. I thought they was, I thought the fire marshal was going to kick us. We, we, we was over capacity. We was at St. Francis College in Brooklyn. Who remember that? Anybody? Was anybody there? Who, was anybody there for the, um, the gathering of the masses 
St. Francis College in New York with Brother Paddock, I say the Duke of Tears, and Phil Valentine. The biggest lecture I ever it was huge. It was, it was major. It was major. That was fine. It was major. I'm talking about you could barely breathe in that auditorium. Your kicks up and said, Of course I was. Yeah, see, did you saw the video? Yeah, you had to, you had to be there in person. Yeah, exactly. Somebody, they, I'm Dre. Thanks for, they had to put people in other rooms. Yo, thank you, Dre. I forgot all about that. Yo, the room was packed to capacity. We had a what they call it, a flow over room where it was a big screen, and you could watch Brother Panic and Phil. And I said, So there was the room, everybody like this packed. And then there's another room that people sitting in. Then there's everybody outside supporting the vendors. Rod Koo had 50 people on the line. I mean, there was people everywhere online supporting the vendors. Oh, man. You know, I love that event. That's when my, 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 my lady, one of the first people my lady told in the community that she was pregnant, she told Khadijah, Khadijah in panic. Khadijah in panic was in the lobby. And me and my queen told him, we was like, yo, we expect it. We was like, yo, we expect it. They was like, yo. So I never forget. My girl always asks about Khadijah. She get, she get a certain vibe and energy from Khadijah, my girl, my lady. So shout out to Khadijah. But she always, that like Khadijah panic. We was, they was one of the first people in the community we told that we was having, when we was having serious. And y'all seen serious the other day? He's five now. But one of the first people we told was Panic Kadik and Khadija at the um at the gathering of the masters. Yeah, it was a it was a classic. Everybody did their thing. As always, the only problem I don't know if it was a problem, but the only issue was time. We didn't have enough time. I mean, these are master teachers, and they each need four hours apiece, and we didn't have that. It was from like two to two to nine or something like that. So we had to like rush everybody. That's the only thing. You know, so I just wish we had more time. Um, let me share his lecture, his uh, his website again, occultlectures.com. Make sure everybody in the room, make sure your goal to support occultlectures.com. All right, they uh, it's a it's a celebration for Brother Panic November twenty fifth. If you're in the Atlanta area, make sure you come through. I will be in the room. A lot of people gonna be in the, in the room. Everybody gonna be supporting, celebrating Brother Panic, the life of Brother Panic. Uh, for more information, go to occultlectures.com. Make sure y'all get the Panic Packs. Make sure y'all get his book. Make sure you support. You know. Make sure you support. But yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of y'all, I see y'all talking about Khadijah. Khadij. Yeah, man. I mean, having a mate, that's amazing. Having a mate that support and love you and 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 got your back. Got your back a hundred percent. That's you know, that's that's amazing, and that's that's something special to have somebody that got your back, your front and your back. You know, have somebody that got your front and your back. But yeah, yeah, definitely slide through. I see somebody said I might have to slide. You yeah, pass through, pass through. My brother or sister, I don't know. I, I didn't look at your name, but pass through. Pass through. Pass through. Yeah, all right. So um, I got a show tonight. Very, very, very important topic. We're talking about black births. I got a show with a midwife. Y'all heard about doulas and midwives. I got a show with a with a midwife tonight. And um very important show. Everything that's happening when the star seeds come into this realm, you know, we, we we should be prepared. We should be prepared and um we should be ready for our star seeds and not be a hundred percent dependent on the hospital. Shout out to the hospitals for what they do do. You can't be unappreciative if somebody is is um you know serious. My son was born in a hospital. And I appreciate them for what they did do in the hospital to get him out the womb and a successful birth. And for me to bring him home, I'm just a very appreciative dude. So I will appreciate people that people wouldn't normally appreciate, you know, because that's what I do. I had surgery on my shoulder one time. I appreciate that doctor. I'm not F, I'm not the F all doctors type of person. I appreciate the doctor who gave, who, 
perform surgery on my shoulder to help me. And any doctor or nurse, anybody who has helped me, I appreciate it. I appreciate everybody who's, who has who has provided help. You know, appreciative, gr grateful. Because in, in that time when I needed that help, that person came through. Everybody, everybody ain't perfect. Every organization ain't perfect. I want you to use your intuition in this world. When it comes to navigating in this world, use your intuition. You know, figure out when it's time to listen to somebody. Figure out when it's time to listen to yourself. And even if you listen to somebody, you listen to yourself because yourself is telling you to listen to that somebody. So ultimately, figure out how to listen to your intuition because your intuition is going to tell you who to listen to, who not to listen to. There's times when I need to listen to that doctor. You know, there's times when I don't need to listen to that doctor. My intuition will guide me. But don't think, confuse intuition with ego when it's like, if the doctors or if this, no, 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 no. You may need, you, you, you got a loved one that get caught up in some shit. You may need that doctor. You may need, you know, but it just depends. But the, that's why I'm saying it's all about intuition. Intuition. But my point is saying that is saying that we're going to have to talk about birth and the process of the star seeds coming into this realm. I'm going to have a, wind, a midwife. We're going to talk about doulas. We're going to talk about all of that. All right. Uh, any question? Let me get it. Uh, it I'm, I'll take a, about three questions before I get out of here. Three questions before I get out of here. Your panic was in his 50s. Um, yeah, I'll let his wife tell exact age. And everything, all the specific details, his wife will tell you all of that. You know, I'm not I'm not here to talk about specifics. Specifics for those who are you said pacifics. You didn't say you know, a nigga will a nigga will skip all over all this information just to comment. You said pacifics. It's not pacific, Rich. It's specifics. Just skip over everything I say, just to say that. That's how some of these niggas is. So, specifics, not pacific, but the specific details. His family would say all of that. I'm here to give a, a, a you know, a, lo a loving farewell to the brother on my end and my personal experience. Will you put up the video of Panic and Bobby about Michael? I don't even have it no more. Uh, that, that the blog talk era of my life. I didn't save any of it. I'm just that type of dude. I move on. I don't save shit. But I didn't save. I don't have one episode. I do not have one episode of my blog talk era. Not one. So I'm sure there's a way I could get it or somebody else got it. But I don't have one episode of the blog talk era. It's just how I am. Uh, like I said, three questions and I'm going to get out of here. Brother Rich, who sent you to do such good works? I guess I set myself to do such good work. See, I'm, I got a young face, but I'm an old soul. I mean, I've I've existed eons, billions and billions of years. That I do know. I'm a very, very old, old soul. That's why some of your teachers, they have such great respect for me, and they may not know it yet, but it's on a it's on a on a level, on an unconscious level. A lot of people know what I represent. And a lot of people feel my my uh, my ancient spirit. So regardless of how young I look, the speakers know what's up. They know who I am, and they respect it. And I respect them for respecting it. And let and let me do my job. You know what I'm saying? Let me do what I came down here to do. All right. Uh, let's get to the next question. What's the biggest best lesson, brother? Panic taught you besides the love codes. Definitely simply lucid. Shout out to simply lucid. Simply lucid got on the witch attire. Is that the witch attire? Simply shout out to simply lucid. Simply lucid look like simply lucid got on the witch attire. Shout out to simply lucid. Uh, definitely know thyself. And the brother stressed that it's not from a historical perspective. Know thyself. Know the plight of black people. My people has been through this. All of that is great. It's amazing. But when we say know thyself, we know thyself in a selfish way, in the individual way. Because like I said, everybody has a different shoe size down here. And when I say shoe size, if he was listening earlier, 
I mean, fingerprint. Since everybody's fingerprint is different, everybody has a different destiny. Everybody has a different psychological approach. Everybody has a different uh, mental approach. Everybody has a different health approach. Everything is just different for everybody. So you have to ultimately know who you are to navigate and maneuver in this realm as you should. When I meant to just follow people. This cancer, all these diseases is from us not knowing ourselves. From us being, these are our emotional diseases. You know, not to say that even if you know yourself, you know, you could suffer from pain that you just never got over. I suffered a terrible uh, loss for my mother. Uh, panic suffered loss from his mother. That could affect you health wise, you know. You know, my mother was the greatest in the world. Panic talked about how his mother was the greatest. He loved his mother. I, I filmed that his mother's funeral. I filmed that his mother's funeral and gave him his footage because he wasn't able to attend. And, and, and I was thankful that I was able to help the brother. And the brother was very thankful. And I'm glad the brother was very thankful. I appreciate brother for believing in me and just, you know, asking me, you know, it, was, it wasn't a problem at all. Shout out to Panic Sister, Reese or Reese. I forget her name is either Reese or Reese. Shout out to Brother Panic Sister. It has an absolutely magnificent sister. Great spirit. Great spirit. Shout out to Panic Sister, Reese or Reese. I don't want to mispronounce. It's either Reese or Reese. Shout out to his sister. Magnificent soul. Magnificent spirit. Uh, let's, get, let's get to, uh, so yeah, um, know thyself. Know thyself is the biggest lesson Brother Panic told me. That's the number one. The love codes, well, I don't know, it's a tie between the love codes and knowing thyself. That's a tie. That's a tie. That's a tie. Because they're both equally, to me, both of them uh, I was, uh, Brother Rich, how old was Panic? Let, like I said, let his family talk to y'all about that. I'm not here to talk about the brother's age. I'm not here to talk about the brother's age, his family. I don't. That's not even important right now. That's not even important. And but I understand why everybody's people are curious. But I'm not here to discuss any of that. I'm very careful of what the family may or may not want to discuss. So his family will talk about that. Come on the 25th, and maybe you could ask his family that, and you know, get an answer. But I'm not here to discuss brother Panic's age or anything like that. I'm just here to discuss the great works that he has uh, contributed. And in, uh, in this community, you know. Uh, but somebody said, brother panic, tell you all his days. Yeah, if you watch this video, you may you may know. Let's get uh, one last question. Yeah, I, yeah, Panic did eight-hour lectures, man. Panic, man, this that motherfucker could talk. Oh, that nigga could talk. You get on the phone with that nigga, that nigga have you on the phone for hours. Woo, Panic could talk. Oh, good brother, great brother, amazing spirit, amazing spirit. That brother could talk. Always, always want to drop knowledge. Always ready and willing to drop knowledge and 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 and, and chop up some game. Panic was always ready to chop up some game. Panic was a Taurus. People saying Panic sign. Panic was a Taurus. Panic was a Taurus. Let's get to one last question. Um, let me see. Let me see. Oh, the Michael Jackson videos on Panic's YouTube. Oh, great. Okay, yeah. The Michael Jackson videos on Panic YouTube. Okay, great. Uh, last question, brother Rich. How are you coping with this? It's a mixture. You know, I, I, I originally it was sad to hear his wife called me. Khadijah called me and told me. Uh, she called me on the phone and told me, and it was sad to hear. But I immediately, you know, realized who I was effing with. This is brother Panic. We talking about? He ain't no joke. Powerful spirit. I know he good. He prepared himself for this. And I know he's preparing all of us for what we call death, which is really not death at all. I just did a video with Rod Hayes and Billy Carson talking about how this is the rover. 
imagine, imagine for a second we're driving. Say you driving. See, we're used to driving for an hour. Imagine you was driving your car for 20, 30 years. You just driving your car. After a while, you're going to think you're your car because you're just driving that car that long. Then imagine you finally step out your car, right? And you stand up. And then 80% of the population thinks you died because that car's not because that car's not moving no more. The car's not driving no more. So they're like, oh, my God, the car died. No, the car was just a vehicle to get me from destination A to destination B. What if I had to drive from Earth to Sirius Star Constellation? It may take me 100 years. But once I get to Sirius in my car and my car stops driving, the car didn't die. The vehicle took me to where I had to go. And now it's time for me to step out the vehicle. Brother Panic was the vehicle. It took that entity where it had to go. He stepped out that vehicle that we know as Brother Panic. That's That was his Mercedes Benz. Brother Panic was this entity's Mercedes Benz. Once he got to where he had to get, once he experienced what he had experienced, he opened up that car door and stepped out. Now we thinking the car stopped driving. Yeah, the car stopped driving, but that don't mean, brother, that don't mean the entity died. The entity finally got out the car and, got, and made it to his destination. Panic fulfilled his mission and his purpose down here. Not only did he teach the world, but he found love in the form of Khadijah. What beats that? What's fucking with that? What's fucking with that? You find love and you get to fulfill your passion in the same breath and you love your family and everything in the same breath in the same lifetime. What's fucking with that? He got out his car and he got to, he finally got to his destination. So he opened up his car doors. We look at it as death, but panic opened up his car doors. His car was called brother panic. We each got a car. There's Mercedes, there's BMW, there's Audi, all these expensive cars. His expensive car was Brother Panic. It was a luxury car. Luxury because it was able to teach, the vehicle was able to deliver so many messages. This is my vehicle. Brother Rich, Richard Merritt. My vehicle, shit, nigga. Shit. Shit. Nigga, my vehicle is popping, nigga. When I died and died, I got left. My, I got out my vehicle. My vehicle took me where I had to go. Destiny's child, nigga. My fate is sealed. So, all right. So, uh, with that being said, um, bless, blessings, shout out to Brother Panic. Make sure you go to the site, Occult Lectures, occultlectures.com. Post it again in the chat. Make sure you go to the site, occultlectures.com. Somebody said, in cars. <laughs> somebody said, in carceration. <laughs> yeah, we, this car is an incarceration. We incarceration. <laughs> I like that. I like that, y'all. I like that, y'all. Incarceration. It's an incarceration. I like that one. I like that. I like that. Incarceration. Oh, man. That's a good one. That is a good one. It's definitely an incarcerate. I like that one. Oh, man. It took that sass, Panic. Panic Channel do this Negro. This Negro. Ren's work. This Negro. No tap. Ren's work. Incarceration. Uh, King Simon sharing um, Khadijah's uh, PayPal and Cash App. Can't give Khadijah a shot enough. I don't, you know, there's no, the last decade of his life, I don't think about panic without thinking about Khadijah. So, you know, that's the main, one of the main messages I'm getting. So I got to give respect where respect is due. You know? All right, family, tune in tonight at 9. I'm getting out of here. I got an amazing, important show on the process of bringing star seeds into this realm, getting getting them ready for this realm. Important show, all right? Not only do we have to prepare for life, but we also have to prepare for death. 
Got to prepare for both. Brother Blue Pill used the term earlier, um, death doula. We know about birth doulas. He used the term death doulas. Maybe we need some more death doulas around here. Like Brother Panic, teaching us how to leave this realm, exit this realm, and not get caught up in shit when we leave this realm. All right, with that being said, I'm getting out of here. This is Brother Rich, Black Magic, a.k.a. Father Rich. Well, I, did I did I tell you my new my new AKA might be Dream Master? Who said that the other day? Somebody who who was I talking to y'all? I forgot. Who was I talking? Was that uh Dr. B? Who was I talking to y'all? No, it was Hank. It was Hank. Yeah, Hank was talking about the Dream Master thing. He was talking about the Dream Master thing. Anyway, y'all, I appreciate y'all. Thanks for tuning in. This has been my farewell to Brother Panic from my perspective, my experience with the brother. Number love to you, Brother Panic. You know what I'm saying? Keep doing your thing. You know, you would definitely be missed and loved and appreciated in this realm. All right? We'll see you soon, my brother. Stay up. Stay light. Stay dark. Peace.